I'm Daughter of Darkness. Welcome to the family. When you're out in public, the last thing you expect is to run into a ghost. But that's exactly what happened to the people featured in tonight's stories. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you like tonight's video, click on the end screen to view more. The great gods of YouTube will smile down on our family of darkness if you do. They're demanding little creatures, aren't they? But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way. And let's get scared together, 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 together. I did not believe in ghosts before this happened. In fact, I made endless fun of people who did. It all began four years ago when I started teaching at an alternative school about 40 minutes from where I live. It's pretty much in the middle of nowhere and housed inside of a larger, mostly abandoned building. We only occupied about five rooms and the rest of the building went unused and it's located right next to a very old cemetery. When I first arrived at the school, the principal would make jokes about the ghosts that lived there, but it was mostly along the lines of, Ooh, don't misbehave, or the ghost is gonna get ya. I thought it was a joke, so I just dismissed it, until one night that I stayed late to paint the classroom door. It was in November and the sun went down early, I was there at 6.30 p.m. and the building was mostly dark, and I thought I was there alone. I was just happily painting away, completely unafraid. But for about 30 minutes I'd been hearing a rather rhythmic banging sound, and it seemed to be coming from the lockers in the hallway outside my classroom. But I didn't think much of it, I thought maybe it was a rat or something. Then, for reasons I still cannot explain, I thought about the ghost. I suddenly realized that that banging was way too regular for it to be a rat, so I stepped into the hallway. Hello? I called out, sure that somebody was there. As soon as I said it, though, the noise went from a rhythmic banging to an all-out loud and fast banging for like 30 seconds straight. Freaked me out. But I was sure that there was a rational explanation for it. So I stood there in the quiet of the hallway, listening, trying to hear it again, to prove that it was just a coincidence and not a response to my hello. I stood there for a good five minutes and heard nothing. So I called out again. Is someone there? And again, as soon as I finished saying that, there came the same loud, hard banging. It was clearly the sound of somebody banging on the lockers, but I saw no one. I was still sure that there had to be some reasonable explanation, so I stood and waited again, continuing to hear nothing. Now at this point I should have just left, but I'm dumb, so I doubled down on the stupid. With my heart pounding, I said, Are you a ghost? Again it responded by banging loudly on the lockers. I was terrified but I saw the opportunity of a lifetime. My whole life I feared death, but here was my one chance to prove that there is in fact life after death. I figured it was the only chance I'd get, so I said, Are you a friendly ghost? Dead silence. But I continued. I asked, Do you want to hurt me? And at that moment, I got the craziest, loudest pounding response yet. I screamed, dropped my paint on the floor, and took off running down the hallway towards the exit. And while doing so, I inadvertently left my wallet, cell phone, and car keys behind. Honestly, I'm not sure what my plan even was. I was just blindly running, trying to get away. And as I ran, the loud banging noise followed me down the hallway, banging on the lockers close behind me. As I made a mad dash for the front door, I noticed that the main office had lights on, and my principal and another teacher were in there talking. I burst through that office door, scared out of my mind, and I nearly gave them both a heart attack. The principal asked me what was wrong. I said, 
there's a ghost in here. And he said, uh, yeah, I told you about that when you first started here. And I said, but I thought you were joking. After calming down and telling him what happened, he walked me back to my classroom to get my stuff. After walking me to the car in the parking lot, the principal got in his own car and drove away. But the moment he left, the banging started again. This time, though, on the AC unit that was located outside the building near my car. I've never driven out of a parking lot so fast in my life. Over the years in that place, I've heard disembodied voices of young children laughing, had heavy boxes fly off shelves, had teachers hear their names called when no one was around, and seen chairs move across the floors by themselves, and plenty of other things. There was even a female ghost seen wearing old-timey clothes standing out by the dumpsters. I'll never make fun of people who believe in ghosts ever again. Years ago, I was in Taos, New Mexico with a friend. We stayed at the Taos Inn Hotel, a very historic place. The first night that we were there, late at night, I found myself in a kind of sleep paralysis. Not asleep, but not quite awake either. Sort of an in-between stage. I could still see the room in the twilight, though. Suddenly, I heard these high-pitched voices all around me, giggling and laughing. It totally freaked me out because I couldn't move or do anything. Before I knew it, I felt myself being flung up off the bed all the way up to the ceiling, then felt myself falling back down to the bed. Then I'd be flung up to the ceiling yet again. And all the while this was happening, the high-pitched voices were all around me, laughing. I was terrified, but I kept telling myself that at least the spirits were laughing and having fun, so maybe they weren't too bad. I kept trying to wake myself up, thinking it was a dream and that I was really asleep. Finally, I started chanting a Buddhist phrase to try to make it all stop. And it worked. I fell down to the bed one last time, and that was it. Everything stopped. The room went quiet, and I could see my friend in the bed next to mine, sleeping soundly. It took me a long time to get back to sleep, but I finally did. The next day, I told my friend what happened, thinking it was probably just sleep paralysis, but also wondering why it felt so strange. She told me that there had been an Indian massacre near where the inn was built, and a lot of buildings around there are supposed to be haunted. Months later, I was telling yet another friend about it, and she looked at me and said, You know, I bet those were Indian children playing the blanket toss game with you. Apparently, there was a game that the Native American children would play, where they would toss each other up and down using a blanket. My friend showed me pictures of it in a book. That all made sense, because the voices were so high-pitched and giggly, it had to be children. The whole thing was very strange. I used to work in a hotel in Ireland. I was live-in staff, and the staff quarters were located in an old part of the hotel that used to be used as the guest rooms. One night I was working the late shift, and I finished up around 1.30 in the morning. I did my usual after-work stuff, then made a cup of tea and went back to my room. Staff quarters were located in a very dingy part of the hotel. There were broken floorboards underneath the carpet and you had to learn where they were or you'd trip and fall, which I had done a few times after some drunken nights out. I was about to turn the corner to go down to my room when I saw something out of the corner of my eye. It was a woman standing at the end of the corridor. She was wearing what I thought was a red and white dress. Thinking that she was lost, I told her that this part of the hotel was for staff only and that she wasn't allowed. But she ignored me, and instead of leaving, she turned and walked towards the fire exit around the corner. I followed after her, 
But when I turned the corner, no one was there. I went through the fire door and onto the flat roof of the hotel. But again, no one was there. As I went back inside, I realized that that fire door made a whole lot of noise when I opened it. Yet, I never heard her open it. Now, I don't believe in ghosts, and this is the only thing that could be considered paranormal that has ever happened to me. But this isn't the end of the story. A few days later, I was working during the daytime, and a couple of locals came into the dining room for coffee. I asked them if they knew of any stories about ghosts in our hotel, and they had a story to tell me. A long time ago, there was a hotel guest that was there for her wedding. She was actually being forced to marry a man that she hated. It was some sort of arranged marriage thing between families. On the night of their wedding, she went up to her room, which was located in what are now the staff quarters. When her new husband came up to the room a few hours later, drunk, she was in the hallway waiting for him, in the same place that I saw that woman. It turns out that she had hidden a knife in her dress during the wedding dinner. Instead of sleeping with her husband that night, she plunged that knife into her own neck, killing herself. I guess it was the only way she could think of to avoid being married to this man. According to this local customer, her ghost has been seen quite a few times waiting for her husband upstairs in that corridor. When I was studying engineering in college in India, I went on a road trip to Rajasthan with my friends. There's a place in that town called the Bangor Fort, which is supposed to be haunted. Due to some paranormal experiences that I had earlier in life, I was wary about meeting a ghost on this trip. In order to get to our destination, we had to drive right past that fort. And since we had been delayed earlier in the day, by my calculations, we would have been driving right past that fort around midnight. So I wanted to stop for the day to avoid driving past there that late at night. My friends, however, did not agree. Especially the stupid one, Pratap, who's always trying to prove his bravery by challenging the paranormal. So my request to avoid the fort was shot down. No one likes to go near that place after 7 p.m., so the roads were empty. As we passed by the fort, Praytop yelled out the window, Hey ghosts, come on and get us. I dare ya. As soon as he said that, all four tires on the vehicle blew out at the same time. I immediately started reciting prayers to remove negative energy and block black magic. All of my friends were scared too, except for Praytop. He was hell-bent on proving that this was nothing more than a coincidence. So, even though we told him not to, he climbed out of the car and went to check the tires. We kept telling him to get back inside, but he ignored us. When he finally decided that he was done and he was coming back into the car, his face suddenly turned white and he started shouting that something was grabbing his leg and he couldn't move. At first we thought he was just trying to scare us, but we soon realized that he was telling the truth. I reached out the window and told him to grab onto my hand while still reciting the prayer. I tried to pull him back inside the car, but it felt like he was glued to the ground. After a few tries of pulling very hard, I was finally able to get him back inside the car. Once we got him back inside, we closed and locked all the doors and windows. And now he was scared too. Then, the car started to shake violently. Just moments before, we didn't see anyone outside. But now, the car was surrounded by very scary faces, and they were all shaking our car back and forth. This went on for about 15 minutes. We all prayed out loud the entire time. Around 4 in the morning, a man drove up to us on a motorcycle. He looked in the window and asked us if we were all right. We were afraid to talk to him at first, not knowing if he was one of them or not. But slowly we became convinced that he really was a human being. We told him the whole story of the four tires and how they got blown out. He laughed and said, 
you all should be thankful that you're still alive. He then called a mechanic to help us, and we were finally able to get out of that place. Having already had enough excitement, we cut the trip very short and drove back to college after that. I live in Vermont, and I grew up here. I've always felt very at home in the woods, but I had them go absolutely silent on me one time, and it made me very uneasy. This was in 2012, when I was hiking with my then-girlfriend up Mount Abraham. There's a section of the trail that's really unique and beautiful. We were hiking through that area, and the woods went absolutely silent. No birds, no bugs, Nothing could be heard. Both of us noticed it, and we came to a stop. She said she felt something in the air and asked if I felt it too, but I tried to just laugh it off. We started hiking again, but it felt like there was somebody watching us, looking over our shoulder the whole time. This particular stretch of trail is not very long, and it should have taken us maybe 30 minutes at the most to reach our destination but time seemed to stand still. We finally got to a crossroads and stopped again. Just 30 feet away, we both saw somebody run across the trail and hide behind a small dead tree. They peeked out from behind the tree, then ducked back behind it again. This tree was far too small for anyone but a child to hide behind. I walked over there and looked behind it, and I found nothing. And at that very moment, the woods came back to life. You could instantly hear all the noise around us. All the regular forest noises came back again. I went over to my girlfriend and we discussed it. We both felt like walking that stretch of path took way longer than it should have, and we both said how uneasy we felt in the silence, like we weren't alone and someone was watching us. I've hiked that same section of path many times since that day, and nothing has happened again. But that day, there was definitely something out of the ordinary in those woods. You just can't go anywhere without running into a ghost or two. I'd like to thank you all so much for listening tonight. You really are my family of darkness. Comment below and let me know which story you like the best, before hopefully going on to listen to more. So, until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>